uh, because esoteric astrology has got a, a fundamental couple of goals. One is, in a certain sense, it's designed to help us understand how does the soul want to pattern the nature of consciousness in the life? And also, how may the lower self get in the way? <laughs> and what can be done about it? So the premise behind this whole philosophy, or I should say this, this, the astrology portion of this philosophy, is that a person has recognized their own duality. They've recognized that higher and lower. And this particular um, type of astrology is trying to cater, cater to the higher, the soul, and help you understand how to transform the lower the personality so that it becomes the rightful servant to the higher. And that's the goal. The soul is who you truly are and ultimately your personality, its destiny is to just be the outer garment. Its destiny is to be the instrument through which the soul tries to interface in the world and, and in the process of interfacing make an uplifting contribution to something beyond yourself. Every human soul wants to serve. And yet it, we have to recognize it and we have to understand how the personality needs to conform to its expectations. Esoteric astrology versus personal or traditional. So esoteric astrology focuses on the purpose of the soul and its struggle to transform the personality. But personal astrology focuses on the personality development and its expression. Because the soul is found on the abstract plane of mind, an esoteric astrologer will interpret a chart abstractly. Abstractly. And so you will see as I go through this, you will see that the language I use will have a more abstract quality to it because the, that's why the whole philosophy is abstract. Those of you who have studied Blavatsky and those of you, you know it's very abstract, but there's a reason for that. Because your causal body, your soul is found on the abstract mental plane, the higher mental plane. And so the more we exercise and develop our abstract consciousness, the more you're in the neighborhood of the soul. Personal astrologers tend to interpret a chart concretely, at least comparatively speaking. In esoteric astrology, the rising sign holds the clue to the soul's incarnational intention. It's an important concept. Um, in traditional astrology, the rising sign, which is the sign that's cresting at the eastern horizon at the moment of your birth, and it's really important in traditional astrology, but when a person has had the awakening, has, has a deeper sense of their soul call, then the rising sign has a higher meaning. Personal astrology, the rising sign reveals the nature of persona and its expression. In other words, a per, uh, the, the rising sign to a traditional astrologers is that it represents appearance, persona, how you are seen in the world or how you would like to be seen. Esoteric astrology says, well, Yes, until you wake up to that higher prompting. And then this higher understanding of the rising sign is really crucial. You see, the reason for that is that this is the sign that's in the east. And the east is the direction of spirit. And it's rising. So it can symbolize the soul's rising intention. In a way, it's your soul sign. Probably more accurate, though, if I were to say it this way, if you could live the higher qualities of your rising sign, well, that's like a gate right to the soul. So if you don't know your rising sign, I encourage you to learn what it is, okay? Esoteric astrology uses three levels, levels of ruling planets for each sign. From this, the spiritual dimension of the sign can be revealed. Curious, how many of you are... Uh, familiar, really familiar with astrology. I'm just kind of want to get a feel for it. Okay. Well, you know that every sign of the zodiac has a planet that rules it, which means represents it. And, and yet traditional astrology has a tier of rulers that are useful and correct as it pertains to the consciousness of the personality. But there's a higher tier of rulers and that those planets are often different than the traditional. And it says that it is suggested that those planets hold the soulful vibration associated with that sign. You see, one of the big differences between traditional and esoteric is that a traditional astrology has a more monolithic approach. But esoteric astrology takes into account 
that people are actually at different levels of, uh, of consciousness. And that that has to be included in the nature of the interpretation. Two people could have exactly the same chart. One is a very young soul and one is a very old soul. And yet, and yet often people kind of interpret it the same, but it's, it's far from the same. And, and that's one of the beauties of esoteric astrology. It takes into consideration the hierarchical dimensions of evolution itself. Okay? So here it is. Personal astrology uses only the traditional rulers. These are useful, but only as it pertains to the personality, not the soul. Esoteric astrology considers the moon to be the major liability of a person's chart, particularly after the age of 35. Whereas traditional astrology, personal astrology, considers the moon as the symbol of a person's emotional tendencies and instinctual patterns. And that's true. It is. But many times, to the person on the path, the moon can represent instinctual patterns that can actually defeat the soul from being more effective in the life. It's because it's as if the soul, because it's, an, it's representing instinctual consciousness, the soul can have difficulty getting a grip on it. So one of the great challenges of, of evolution is to handle the problem of the moon in your chart. And the general rule of thumb is, for the, wherever the moon is found, is that when it, whatever sign it's in, and it, assuming you're on the path, it either means that there's going to be too much of that energy woven into the instinctual dimension of consciousness, or the opposite, not enough of it. Or the third possibility, it's unstable. Sometimes too much, sometimes not enough, so it swings back and forth.